Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Jessica and this is the Pet Parenting Reset. I'm a positive reinforcement dog trainer and pet parent coach. And on this channel, we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, dog and cat nutrition and enrichment, all the wonderful things to make your pet happier and healthier. And today's video is a more serious topic. We're talking about a toxin that has been found in dogs to be 30 times higher. So levels 30 times higher than what are found in humans. And this is a very serious, serious issue. So we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so what is this toxin that I'm talking about? Well, <laughs> if you've had your ear to the ground for any period of time, you probably know that we're talking about glyphosate. We're gonna talk about what glyphosate is in just a moment, but the University of California has conducted studies that show that this very toxic chemical, which by the way is an endocrine disruptor, has been found at 30 times the levels in dogs than is than in humans. And there are some there are some reasons for this. Um, but it's, it's a serious issue. So glyphosate is known at, like it's a weed killer. So if we think of the most popular product we think of when we think of glyphosate is Roundup. Um, recently, and I say like very recently, 2021, 2022, I think it might go into effect in 2022. Glyphosate is not gonna be available for consumer sale. Um, that might, I'm, I'm sure they're appealing it, that might be over overturned, but it's still gonna be available for commercial sales. So it's still gonna be out there. This is mm, mm, maybe a teeny tiny win, but probably not much of a win. Um, glyphosate is a chemical that was developed by the uh, company Monsanto. You've probably heard of Monsanto. Um, we know them to be not a very nice company. <laughs> um, I don't want to get too much into Monsanto. Bayer recently in the past few years bought out Monsanto, so now Bayer owns the rights to glyphosate, which is in the weed killer Roundup. It's in other things as well, but that's the like what we primarily know, like us as consumers, glyphosate equals Roundup, right? But glyphosate is in a lot of other, a lot of other things. <laughs> So glyphosate originally came out, again, like I said, Monsanto created it. It was designed to, it was designed to help the farming industry by allowing crops to grow and flourish with very little to minimal uh, weed competition. They then started making their own, what we know as GMO, um, seeds for different crops. It's a really interesting honestly um and i'm sure at the at the on start of this it was like oh my gosh this is amazing so it went from being something that was just used in agriculture to becoming a because it worked so well <laughs> becoming very very popular and even <clears throat> being able to be used in everyday use um people it could, people can just go into the store and buy gallons of Roundup, right? So it, it became pretty popular pretty fast and it is very, very, very heavily used in the United States. What this means is that not only is our food supply, and by the way, our pet's food supply, heavily, heavily, heavily saturated with this very toxic chemical, but it's in our environments now too because it is so widely used. As I was saying, uh, Monsanto was the one who originally came out with this product, which we know as Roundup, and their patent expired. I, I wanna say their patent was good for like 20-ish years. And once their patent expired, everybody started using glyphosate in their products. So that's why I say it is everywhere, <laughs> like literally everywhere. Almost every product, unless you're buying a natural product, you really wanna check the labels because it's everywhere. So Monsanto also created crops, which we now know today as GMO crops. These crops are glyphosate resistant, which means that when glyphosate is sprayed to kill all of the weeds, those crops itself are not going to be affected by the glyphosate. Now they're going to absorb <laughs> that glyphosate, which we know to be true today, but they're not gonna die from it as the weeds around it would. So that is one of those patented things. That's why 
these GMO crops became so popular because everybody was using glyphosate and they didn't want their crops to die. What's really interesting about glyphosate is the, that it has antimicrobial properties, which technically makes it an antibiotic as well. Um, and that's really, really not good for us or for our pets. If you think about, just think about chicken, right? No antibiotics ever because antibiotic resistance is becoming a, like it, it's a thing, it's been a thing. And we are very much aware that when we overuse and abuse antibiotics, then we get sicker and sicker and sicker because viruses and bacteria become more and more resistant to these antibiotics. So using antibiotic basically is an antibiotic on all of our crops. What we eat, what our pets eat is forcing new variations of viruses and bacteria that are more antibiotic resistant. It's also forcing more antibiotic resistance in the soil and around the crops and all, and, and this, is, this is a huge problem. So here are some of the very common GMO crops. We're talking corn, soybean, alfalfa, apples, canola, cotton, papaya, potatoes, squash, and sugar beets. Those are some of the most popular ones, though that certainly is not an exhaustive list. Now, there are plenty of non-GMO crops that have insanely high levels of glyphosate. We know this to be true. Here are some of those. Oats, wheat, barley, and rye, legumes, chickpeas, beans, potatoes, and peas. Now, just, okay, just with that list alone, okay, we're eating a lot of that. Think about what's in your pet's food. Your pet is eating a lot of that too. By the way, the animals, chickens, cows, pigs, um, turkeys, the animals that are, uh, bread for slaughter, for us to eat, for our pets to eat, they're eating a lot of these crops too. So literally glyphosate, I mean, is everywhere. Additionally, <laughs> glyphosate is water soluble, meaning it gets into the groundwater, it gets into um, streams and rivers. It is, it's getting into our water supplies, it's everywhere. So let's talk about how glyphosate is affecting humans and animals. First and foremost, it actually affects the nutrients of the plant. So glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide, which means that it is actually um, inhibiting production of protein cells and chemicals in the plant for growth. Specifically, it inhibits the synthesis of something we know, or something we call alkaloids in plants, which is what produces the medicinal properties in plants. So while for thousands, for, for the history of humanity, we have been, and by the way, animals on the planet as well, have been using plants as medicine, these uh, glyphosate is restricting the synthesis of the alkaloids in the plant, which are producing the medicinal properties in the plant, so they are less valuable medicinally. This process where these pl plants are losing nutritional value, um, they are not able to produce the protein cells to uh, grow properly is also depleting soil health. Secondly, we know glyphosate to be a very, very toxic chemical. We know that it is cancer causing, that is a fact. There are many, many uh, lawsuits that have gone through the court and are continuing to go through the court system on the uh, damaging effects of glyphosate, including um, cancer, but also it's an endocrine disruptor. So it can really uh, wreak havoc on the body in many, many, many different ways, including infertility. So we know that glyphosate has negative effects on the liver. There are also studies that show glyphosate has negative effects and even cancers of the colon, sinuses, lungs, prostates, ovaries. Um, it causes lymphomas and multiple different melanomas. There is also a link between glyphosate and gut issues, specifically leaky gut. If you've never heard the term leaky gut before, it's where the lining of the gut, so it's kind of like the lining of the gut is like a mesh. And this mesh is, say this is a, a tight mesh, that a healthy gut looks like. 
a leaky gut means that the mesh in the lining of the gut is kind of going like this, right? So your, you and your pet may not be able to digest food properly. Your, the, the, whatever nutrients are in the food that you and your pet are eating are going to be, instead of like this, where they're going through the gut easily and, and not escaping, they are able to escape this mesh. So um, uh, the ability to absorb nutrients from the food is diminished, sometimes even depleted. So yes, just another, another problem with glyphosate. There are an increasing number of endocrine illnesses, not just with humans, but with our pets as well. And this also is linked to glyphosate. It is, um, it has characteristics, it shows uh, that it is an endocrine disruptor. So it's a hormone disruptor. So we're talking about um, the thyroid, we're talking about literally everything in the body runs on hormones. So a hormone disruptor is a really negative, really negative uh, side effect. We also know that that affects fertility quite a bit, both with male, but especially with female. Um, humans and dogs. So, okay, glyphosate is everywhere. And one of the reasons why it shows so much higher in our dogs, one, they're so much smaller than us, right? So that is a contributing factor. But also when we think about the quality of ingredients that go into what most people feed their pets, it's not very high quality, especially when we think about feeding a kibble. Um, that, that's probably some of the lowest quality foods that that go into making that kibble. So we're talking about very, very, very poor quality foods to begin with. We know that there's just, and, and then on top of it, think about all of the GMO uh, foods and the non-GMO foods that we talked about earlier that still have very high glyphosate levels, legumes, potatoes, wheat, Barley, these are very, very prominent in kibble products for our pets. So there's part of it. But then glyphosate is everywhere in our environment, right? People just liberally spray it on their lawns. Commercial companies use it to maintain neighborhoods. It's everywhere. And you think about, so our dog's paw pads are absorbing things that they walk in and what is on the surfaces of, um, surfaces that they walk on. So when we take them for a walk, they are absorbing chemicals that are on the grass, on the, the rocks, on the concrete that they are walking on. And then if we're using chemicals in our homes, which may probably is not glyphosate in our home, but that is also absorbing in our dog's paw pad. So one thing that we can do, two, here are two things that we can do both for ourselves, ourselves and for our pets, our dogs, feed as much organic food as possible. While not 100% of organic food is going to be glyphosate free, tests have shown that relatively 95% of tested foods that are labeled as organic are free of glyphosate. So eat and feed as much organic as possible. And then when you do take your dog out for a walk, especially if you're walking them in places that you're unsure of what kind of chemicals they may be using, when you get back home, give your dog um, a really good foot cleaning, do um, an apple cider vinegar foot soak, uh, which is mostly water with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. We've talked about that in other videos, so you can refer to those for foot soaks for dogs. But get their paw pads clean as soon as you get home. That's another great way. And also don't use these chemicals um, in or around your home. So yes, this is a very serious topic, but there are things we can do. So those are the takeaways. If you have questions, please comment down below. I'm, there's probably a ton of questions on this partic particular topic because I mean, we can't get away from it at this point, guys. So we have to do what we can to keep it away from us and our pets as much as possible. So with that, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you give it a thumbs up. I hope if you're not already subscribed, then you go ahead and make sure you are subscribed. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, make sure you're subscribed so you can get notified every time I post a new video. Also, um, check the link tree in the description for a few reasons. One, there is a free beginner dog training series video series to train your dogs this is a limited time offer normally sells for $1.99 but for you today it's free check in the link tree in the description for that link 
Also, when you check Linktree, make sure to join the Patreon family. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get exclusive content on Patreon, behind the scenes content, first look at content. Also, it helps me to be able to continue bringing content like this to you and other pet parents like you. As well as the podcast. <laughs> Wherever you get your podcast, make sure to search for The Pet Parenting Reset and give us a follow. I hope you enjoy the content over there as well. All of that said, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope, please give your pet some extra love from me because I love all pets. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.